pumpkin whoopie pies. And these are great little um, cream cheese sandwiches is what I call them. Uh, you can, they're, you, they come in a variety of flavors. You can do vanilla, chocolate, pumpkin. I've seen them in a thousand different ways. And um, I'm gonna show you how I make my pumpkin one since it's already fall. All the leaves are orange and yellow and it's time to start thinking pumpkin. So let's get started. Um, this recipe that I'm gonna give you is um, one that is just my go-to. I can't remember where I got it, but a lot of times I grab recipes and I kind of make them my own, which means I change the ingredients a little bit. And you could do the same. You could make this your own by just alternating, but this is a full proof one. It's, um, it works every single time. So what you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees or 175 Celsius. And you want to lightly grease, or I you just use a spray um, canola oil, uh, your, either a flat cookie sheet, or I use the actual whoopie pie uh, pans. And Will, I think it's Wilton makes these. So you could go to any Hobby Lobby or Michaels and find these. Or you could even find them on Amazon. Just type in whoopie pie pan and you'll you'll be able to find them. And they're not very expensive at all. So I've lightly greased one. I only have one pan, so I'm gonna have to use it multiple times. Um, somebody that loves whoopie pies would probably have four or five of these. But uh, I have one. And um, we'll go ahead and get our mixture ready to go here. Uh, the oven's ready and piping hot, so I'm gonna kind of move fast. I've got everything pre-measured out. So um, for those of you that don't like it when I go and grab a spoon or a, an ingredient I forgot, everything is right here today. So we're gonna combine uh, vegetable oil, brown sugar, and we're gonna, uh, and pumpkin and some eggs, and we're gonna beat them together in the mixer. Okay, okay we're so we're gonna get some brown sugar in here. And this is a whopping two cups of packed brown sugar. And brown sugar is just granulated sugar with molasses. You can make it in your mixer. You don't have to buy it at the grocery store already done if you don't want to. Um, I usually make my own and just refill my canister. I'd rather make it myself because I can buy organic uh, sugar and molasses to be able to do that. Okay, we're gonna add two large eggs in here. And these are just from my chickens outside. I've got three of them waiting right behind me at my back door. They, st they stay there. Um, one of them has a real hard time being around a rooster and the other one, the other two there just to keep her company actually. So pretty funny. Okay, where was I? Uh, we're gonna mix, uh, we need a cup of oil and you're gonna use vegetable oil for this. And for those of you that like to substitute things, I've never done this with butter. I've never done this with shortening. I've only done it with oil. So I don't really know. You could try it yourself and see what happens. Um, I just do what works. <laughs> and we're gonna need um, a cup and a half of pumpkin, pumpkin puree. And you don't want the pie filling, you want the puree. I actually opened this upside down, but it's, um, this is non-GMO, this is non-GMO, this is not organic, but it's just pumpkin, Libby puts it out. It's a pumpkin puree. Okay, so let's do, cup and a half of this. One of the healthiest things you can give your dog is pumpkin. It really helps their digestive. Uh, it's really great for chickens too. They love it. My chickens don't like it mushy like this. But squash is one of the most healthiest things you can give humans and animals. It's just a really good thing to give them. I always keep it in the pantry. Okay. 
put this pumpkin aside. I'll make something else out of it. And we're going to beat this really well together. I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla. And it's about a teaspoon. You can't really go wrong with vanilla and fall spices. I'm going to also go ahead and add in the... I'm using a tablespoon and a half of pumpkin pie spice because it has all of the spices that I that this requires for this recipe. But if you want to get them or do them separately, you're going to need ginger, cloves, and ground cinnamon together. This already has it all in there, so I'm just going to use this. Okay, let's get this all creamed up together. And surprise, surprise, my machine is plugged in. <laughs> just love the smell of these spices in the fall. It just tells me Christmas is coming. Hey, if you're looking for any kind of Christmas gifts or just gifts in general, and you want to peruse our store, you can go to cedarhillcountrymarket.com and I have a brand new platform there on Shopify. And uh, I've got a lot of different gift ideas, and uh, I'll have a YouTube channel for that too. But if you're looking for just wonderful little homemade gifts for family, be sure and check that out. Now, this is all mixed up, okay. and we're going to go ahead and add our flour, salt, baking powder, baking soda, and go ahead and get that in here. Here's the salt, baking soda, and baking powder. And I will leave a link to the recipe for this on my blog page. Now, the flour, this is three cups of flour, and I'm going to add it in a little bit at a time. If I dump this in there, well, it's just going to be horrible. So I'm not going to do that. Anyway, I'm going to add a, a little bit at a time. I think I'm going to use my little scoop here I've done for the brown sugar. I'm just going to add a little bit at a time here because... It mixes better. It's not so lumpy. And um, it just, it flies less. I think KitchenAid needs a pulse button. You can also do this in a food processor with the plastic blade on it. I just want to mix that in really well. Okay, we're going to add some more flour. And we're just going to put them here on the pan. I like these pans because they make them perfectly round. It's really nice. handed so let me this makes quite a few of them and you want to let them completely cool down before you fill them you could eat these plain but before you fill them up you really want to make sure they're cooled down because the sugar and the cream cheese filling that we're going to use it will just melt <laughs> I wrap them in saran wrap and put them in the freezer. And if Bill wants something sweet during the holiday time, he can just leave them out the morning of and then he can have one for lunch or whatever. These, together with the cream cheese filling, are, it's probably going to be about 400 calories. So if you're calorie counting, hopefully nobody does that during the holidays. bit more all right we're gonna be doing this a lot but you want to uh, bake these at 350 uh, for approximately let me see uh, 10 to 12 minutes and you just you 
you can test them just like cake. You know, you can press them down a little bit and see if uh, if they bounce back or you could certainly prick them with a toothpick. But let me get these in the oven and we'll be back once all of my okay, whoopie so pies are finished and cooled and we'll start on the filling. Pumpkin whoopie pies. I've got a brick of cream cheese in here and about a fourth a cup of shortening. And I'm going to add um, two cups of confectioner sugar, icing sugar, or powdered sugar, whichever you call it. And powdered sugar is really easy to make too. You just need a high powered uh, blender and some regular granulated sugar. And you just speed it up as high as your blender will go. And typically, depending on the grade of blender you're using, you'll get powdered sugar. Sometimes I buy it, sometimes I don't, but I typically always have it in the pantry. So we're gonna do two cups. This is pre-sifted. Uh, you can obviously sift your own. We're gonna do one at a time. So I'm gonna do one cup first and then I'll add the other cup. And I've added a little bit of vanilla in this too. I'm gonna use our whisk this time. I'm just going to, again, go slow because if you don't, powdered sugar, you know, which is just another cup. Whoopie pies are traditionally filled with a shortening filling. I don't really like to eat a lot of shortening. So I just choose cream cheese, probably no better, but that's just what I like. The thought of putting that much lard in my mouth is not appealing, so I put a little bit, but I don't a lot of it. I know most commercial bakers use shortening for all their frosting, which is why I try to make my own. Okay. It's gone high. We're going to blend this for about two minutes. stop this and scrape the sides so that all the sugar gets down in there. And I think just because of how creamy it is, I'm going to add another half a cup of sugar. I don't want it to be kind of, you know, a pretty thick consistency because we're going to put it in a piping bag and pipe it onto the fill it with this whoopie pies filling. So it'll be easy to, you could spread it on with a knife, but I like the ability to um, fill them this way. Some of them I filled all the way, which made them pretty large, and some of them are smaller. But smaller is better because they're less calories, right? So I'm going to get myself ready to assemble these, and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're going to get a cake plate to put them on. Now, these are not perfectly even, and unless you're a professional or commercial baker, they're probably not going to be. But you could slice off the tops to make them fit perfectly. Um, I may do one or two of those like that. I don't know. But um, 
these are just homemade, not anything special. I'm not selling them or doing anything like that. I'm going to be probably eating and freezing a lot of them. And I can put these on a tray and, um, like I said before, take them out a little bit at a time and, um, let's just see how it goes. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to fill the flat side and then put the top on it and then put them over here. <clears throat> they're probably not going to be a little, they're probably going to be a little wobbly, but that's okay. And then I wrap these in um, press and seal or saran wrap and I put them in the freezer or refrigerator till they're eaten. I don't leave them out because they've got cream cheese in them and if you let them sit out, eventually, you know, you're gonna have a mess. So let me uh, make sure that my cream cheese is on the way out here. And I'm just gonna fill you want a good amount of cream cheese. You, you know, you don't want it gushing out the side. Like that. And I know I've seen people stack them sideways, but we'll do a few here. And if you, this is too uh, loose or then you need to refrigerate it. It just needs to be good and cold. I'm just gonna set them over here. And now I'm gonna flip them over and do uh, some of the flat side here. I don't do a lot of stuff for show for cameras. I just do what I would normally do. And everybody can just, if they like that, that's fine. If they don't like it, I'm sorry. It's just, I'm just a real home cook and I'm not about fancy. I'm not a cake decorator. I'm not, I don't do a lot of fancy stuff. I learn every all like most everybody else as I go. I mean, that looks pretty good. And I've kind of put sizes together so that I have an idea of what's gonna go. Thanksgiving's gonna be a lot different this year, I know for everybody, most everybody. I won't get to see my family at all, just be Bill and I. But I know there's gonna be a lot of video calling going on in families. Hopefully the internet can stand it.
not sure how I have one extra because that's kind of strange because these were unless Bill grabbed one during lunch. But I'm going to try one real quick and make sure they taste really good. And let's just see what the metal looks like. Really yummy. I hope you guys will try this recipe and thank you for joining me today. And uh, don't forget, find somebody to bless. And I hope everybody has a wonderful beginning to fall. And I'll see you soon on the next video. Bye, everybody. Mm, that's so good. Really good.